right, let's get this show underway again. A great day three scheduled for us here at the KitchenAid Cooking Theater. And we are now joined by the Director of Education at Halfwit Coffee Roasters and the Director of Operations at the Wormhole, a craft coffee shop here in Chicago, from teaching, what is, that, is that Marine? Are you a marine science teacher? Marine science middle yes. school students in Alaska or being an English composition instructor at Southern Illinois University to heading the training program at Halfwit. He found time to consult on Craft Coffee, a manual, the quintessential textbook for brewing coffee at home. Please welcome Andreas Wilhall. Good morning. Who wants coffee today? All right. I know we're all sort of recovering from the time change yesterday. Uh, so as, as our MC said, I uh, most recently helped consult on this book, and that sort of helped me take my professional training background and move it into training the home coffee brewer. Um, and something that I noticed with uh, a lot of my experience is people don't like to make as much coffee at home as they do go out and get coffee. I want to change that. So I want to start off with a question or two. Who likes to cook at home for themselves or for friends? Anybody? Got some people? Who likes to make coffee at home for themselves or friends? Less people. That's what I'm saying. So I think there are two problems that cause that. One is a lack of quality tools. If you walk around this whole show, you are going to see a lot of really nice tools, nice knives, nice cutting boards, nice pans. I think we need to take the same care with the tools we use to make coffee. It changes the game a lot. So the first part is people don't get the right tools. The second part is they don't think that it fits in their morning routine. So I'm gonna change that a little bit. What you're looking for with a nice set of coffee tools is a nice kettle. These are the precision kettle line from KitchenAid. And what I like about them are a couple of things. The first one, in all of my training, the hardest thing to teach somebody to do is to pour water from a kettle over coffee. It takes the most amount of time because a lot of times they're working with a poor, poorly designed kettle that requires a lot of learning on how to actually pour that water with control. And this kettle eliminates that learning curve, and that's what I like about it. And the reason it's able to do that is because it has an adjustable flow restrictor on the inside. So a lot of times when we're talking about uh, kettles like this, we talk about flow rate. And flow rate is just the rate at which the water comes out of the spout. And with a lot of traditional kettles, that's a fixed flow rate. You can't change it, so you sort of have to learn to work with what you got. Here you can set this to three different flow rates depending on what you want to brew. So if you're brewing tea, you can have it wide open, which gives you a nice sort of robust, uh, fast flow rate. And I'll show you in this precision French press real quick. I have this kettle set to the wide open setting. It's nice and fast, and that's good for making loose leaf tea in particular because you want to push those tea leaves around. The other setting we have on this kettle. This is the mechanical kettle. It has this little switch here to start the heating process. I have this on the second setting. I think this is really good for a French press. In particular because you want enough, you want a fast enough flow rate to push all of that around, but you want to have enough control to sort of make sure all the grounds are saturated. Now if anybody's made French press at home, you've probably run into this issue where you're using a traditional tea kettle or uh, a different gooseneck kettle. And I've seen this a lot where people run into this issue where the area closest to their pouring hand develops a little dry patch. And that's because you don't have control over your pour. So you end up sort of turning the French press and trying to get everything saturated. But with this second setting, you're able to control that pour and get everything around the coffee. That's important because when you're making coffee, you want to make sure that everything is saturated. Otherwise, you're only going to get some flavor out of your coffee and you want to be able to get it all. So 
having a precise pour is really important. Now I'm going to show you on this kettle, this is my favorite model here. This is the digital precision kettle and this one I have to the slowest flow rate setting. And what that is really great for is pour over coffee. So today I'm going to show you a little bit on uh, how to make pour over and then I'm going to also make a French press because a lot of people make French press coffee at home and I want to make sure to show you a little bit about that as well. So to make this French press I am using the precision press from KitchenAid. What's great about this is it actually has a scale and a timer built in. So you can add your coffee, you can add your water, you can start your timer without needing to get all these other gadgets. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grind my coffee fresh. This is going to get a little loud. I apologize. Uh-oh. No. Hey, there we go. Okay, so I have my coffee ground fresh. You want to have a coarse grind for the French press. And that's because you are letting the, the water sit with the coffee for an extended period of time. With something like a pour over, you're using a slightly finer grind and that's because the water isn't spending as much time with the coffee. It's actually flowing through the coffee and ending up in the bottom of, in your serving vessel here. So I've got my coffee in, I've got my water heated. I have 40 grams of coffee in here and I'm going to take that, I'm going to do a 700 gram pour of water. And I like to use grams because one gram of water is a milliliter of water so it's really easy to see how much volume you're going to get. It's nice and easy to convert. The great thing about the French press, it doesn't take a ton of technique. You're just pouring water over the grounds and then you just wait. All right, almost to 700. Andreas. Yes. What's with the technique, the bouncing? Does that do something for it? Oh, I am. Uh, the bouncing is just sort of how I, but yeah, it's for rhythm mostly, but what I'm really trying to do is pour in a circle to make sure that everything is getting fully saturated. Then I'm going to place the lid on, but I'm not going to actually press the handle down. I think a mistake a lot of people make is they, they start pressing too soon, and really you just want the lid on to keep the heat in. Uh, and this is going to sit for five minutes. That's what's great about the French press. Active time was 45 seconds of pouring. The rest of that is you going about your day. You can just sort of set a timer and get back to it. So I didn't talk about this when I first started, but what I was doing with this is I rinsed my paper filter and the pour over cone. That is really important because if you don't rinse your filter, you get a very papery taste in your coffee. More so with brown filters than white filters, but it is present in all types of filter. So I always, always rinse the filter. I'm adjusting my grind. I am making it a finer grind for my pour over cone. So I talked about the two problems that people often have with making coffee like this at home. Uh, it is really nice to be able to just press a button on an automatic coffee maker, but I think it's also very rewarding to sort of take some time in the morning and make this a part of your routine. 
It doesn't have to get in the way of your routine. I think, again, this comes back to having the right tools. So what I do with this precision kettle is it actually has a 30 minute hold on this, on this electric base. So it will heat up to the temperature you want and it will hold it for 30 minutes. And I think it's important to have tools that work for you instead of you working around your tools. So what I'll do in the morning is I'll wake up, shower, get ready, and then I will start my water. I'll eat a bowl of cereal, read some of the newspaper, and then I'll come back to this when I'm ready because the water will be hot. I think that is something that, that people think they have to spend a lot of time standing in this position, but you can go about the rest of your morning. Same thing with the French press. You can start this and then go around and do the rest of your morning ritual. So a little bit on pour over technique. You want a very precise pour, which is why I have this set to the slowest flow rate setting. Because before you add any water to the coffee, it's at its most vulnerable and you don't want to push it around by over agitating it. You want to pour fairly gently and sort of let it acclimate to this hot water and you want to make sure everything is saturated. And so what this is, is I'm doing what's called the bloom and it's allowing carbon dioxide to get out of the coffee. Coffee is an inherently bitter thing. It has, it's roasted. It has caffeine in it. Caffeine is bitter, but carbon dioxide adds extra bitterness to it that you don't want. So you add a little bit of water, just enough to saturate the grounds and you let it sit for about 45 seconds. That will let the carbon dioxide out, but it's a short enough time so you still hold on to all of the wonderful aromatics in the coffee. So I'm pouring in circles. I'm just sort of starting in the middle and spiraling outwards. So after my bloom pour, I'm doing a second phase here where I poured to 200 grams. And really what I'm just trying to do is I don't want to overload the coffee. Uh, I want to give it some water and let it sort of hang out because it needs time to extract. It's important to have hot water because it speeds up the process. So cold brew is something that's really popular and that uh, makes a really smooth cup of coffee, but it takes time because you're using cold water. So a lot of cold brew recipes will be 12 to 24 hours and that's because you're doing cold water and you're letting it sit in the refrigerator overnight. You don't really have that time if you're trying to do pour over. You don't want to be holding this kettle for too long. So I'm doing a second pour here and I'm, again, I'm just sort of adding enough water to let the grounds hang out. Total active time of me standing here is under three minutes. The rest of the time is just letting the water drain through the coffee. I think that's another uh, misconception that people have about this process is they think you have to stand here the whole time. But there are, there's active time and then there's total brew time. So after I'm done pouring here, it's acting just like an auto coffee maker where I can walk away and the water will drain through and I can come back to my brewed coffee. Now I've got my French press ready and all I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly plunge the uh, mesh screen down. It's important to go slow. If you do it too fast, you can actually push grounds up around the mesh screen. And uh, I don't know if any of you have had a particularly silty cup of French press, but it's probably meant, it's probably because somebody pressed the plunger a little too fast. So you want to go nice and slow. And something I recommend for serving to multiple people is you want to pour by alternating cups. If I poured into, if I just poured sequentially, the last cup is going to have a bunch of sludge in the bottom. And what I want to do is divvy up my servings. So 
So then I'm going to go back. And it's really nice when you're making coffee for a couple people. Like if I make coffee for me and my wife in the morning and I do a French press, if I don't alternate, I'm the one that has to chew that sludgy cup. So I'm going to alternate my pour. The other thing that's really great about this kettle these uh, precision kettles. There are a couple of other features that I really like. All right, let's get these. Please, thank you. Um, other features that I really like about these kettles is, so I really like the digital kettle because it has this uh, temperature setting where I can set it to whatever I need. This is important because coffee brews in a certain temperature range, green tea, brews at a very different temperature range. So being able to sort of control that and set it and have it ready for me is uh, really great because while I am a coffee professional, I don't always drink coffee. The other thing that I like about all of these is they all have a brew range thermometer on the top. So this one has the brew range thermometer and the temperature readout on the base, but these two you're basically heating the water up to boiling. You're putting the stovetop one on your induction plate, on your gas or electric stove, and you're heating it up and sort of getting it off of there when it's ready. The mechanical model has this little switch that will heat up the water and turn off once it starts to boil. But having this brew range thermometer allows you to uh, get that right temperature for your green tea without any guesswork or without adding another thermometer to the mix. And then the other thing, like I mentioned before, is having these, this adjustable flow restrictor. So traditional gooseneck kettles, which is a kettle with this spout, you, either, you have this trade-off. And what you're doing is you're either going to have something that is fairly affordable, but it has kind of a fast flow rate and you have to learn how to pour with it, which isn't ideal. Or you get yourself a really nice uh, kettle, but it lacks versatility. It has a nice slow flow rate, but you can't really make tea with it. So what happened to me was I ended up having multiple kettles and I already have a lot of coffee gear. I've been making coffee for 10 years in the industry. So uh, having a bunch of gear, a bunch of extra unnecessary gear, I don't want to add that to my collection. So having a kettle that I can really use and just sort of have one tool to do multiple things is really great for me. All right, got my pour over coffee ready. If I could get somebody to help serve it for me. Yes, okay. Gotcha. If anybody would like to try some coffee, all of these samples are going to be at this front table over here, so please feel free to step forward. We need to get caffeinated this morning. All right. So uh, having that adjustable flow rate is really important for me. And what a lot of, uh, if you get a less uh, restricted, pour over kettle with a gooseneck, what a lot of people end up doing is they'll buy an aftermarket product, which is called a, a flow restrictor, but it's about this big. It's a tiny piece of usually plastic, sometimes metal, and it's a solution to the problem, but it's not a very elegant solution because it takes some effort to get it into the kettle, so you don't want to take it out, so you're losing that versatility. And I can tell you from experience, it can get lost easily. Uh, then you spend your morning looking for this in your kitchen instead of just making your coffee and going about your day. So having a flow restrictor that is installed in the kettle and very easy to adjust. I've got my stovetop kettle here and there's just a little selector that you press down if you wanna close off that flow a little bit. 
and it has those three settings and it will click for you with each one. And then you're ready to go. So now I have it set to my slower setting. And here's how great this is. So I'm left-handed, been left-handed all my life. But recently in December, I broke my left hand. I didn't have this kettle at the time, so I couldn't really make coffee. But now I can control my flow by letting this flow restrictor, restrictor do all of the work for me. So I can actually brew coffee with my opposite hand. That's how easy it is. So if, even if you don't have experience with a kettle like this, you can just make coffee very easily. All right, so I want to wrap up a little bit. I only have a few minutes left, but I want to reiterate what I've said earlier about the importance of tools. I see a lot of people taking care to get the right type of knife, and I want people to start doing that with something like this. Me personally, I didn't start cooking for myself until somebody gifted me a good knife and a good cutting board. I had a really cheap knife and I had a really sort of flimsy, too small cutting board that made cooking a chore instead of something to enjoy. And when I finally got those right tools, it opened up my eyes to what I could do with cooking. And I think the same thing applies to making coffee. Once you get the right tool, it takes all of the learning curve out of it and it takes any mental strain out of it and you can sort of stand here and enjoy making coffee. I want you to think a little bit about the act of making coffee. So when you are using an automatic machine it's very passive and you press a button and you sort of, it, it fuels you but you're not taking part in the craft of it. And it's clear looking around this show and walking around the last few days that everyone here is interested in making a craft out of something and making good food, making good products. And there's a long string of people involved in making coffee. And for me personally, it feels very good to be a part of that chain. So it's going from farmer and picker in the farm to processing to roasting and then finally to me and it feels really good to be a part of that process and it only takes a few minutes a day and you can sort of learn to appreciate the coffee as a product a little bit more. So I think that's all I got for you today. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Again, my name is Andreas Wilhoff. Please check out these kettles at the KitchenAid booth. I will be doing a demo there later this morning and then later today at 2. And please check out this uh, wonderful book of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.